Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Hey, Man. I'm Josh. I am Jacob. How you doing, dude? Hey, man. Hey, man. You didn't start it right. Hey, man. There you go. What's up, man? How are you doing, man? I'm good, dude. I'm, uh, I can't tell you how excited I am for this week off. Yo, I'm, uh, we, I've been gone, guys, for two weeks. It's not normal. We had a death in the family, so we had to go from Philadelphia to Beth's hometown, and then we were there until I went to Austin. So, been gone for two weeks. You actually came back. I, I came back. I came back for a day. Very worth it because I wanted to see uh, my girlfriend Iman and my dog. Yeah, I was home for twenty four hours, and then worth I, it. Very, extremely worth it. Let me just say a couple things. Uh, business up front. First of all, we are moving our release date to Tuesdays. Those of you who are listening, Tuesday. Tuesday. Those of you who are listening, um, apologies for the weird gaps and all that stuff. But now we will be dropping on the Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, and those of you watching, uh, you heard what I said <laughs> <laughs> and saw but, what we said. But so excited to be here. Um, just so you know, since the last time that we were in studio, we were in. Uh, L.A. for the Netflix festival. Yep. Um, where our sold-out show at the Bourbon Room was straight up fire. fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and then we went to Philadelphia, the Helium. Um, a great time there. Love the energy of the people who came to the shows. I, uh, what was remarkable for me about that trip is I had never had a ketamine lollipop before. <laughs> so Dude. Uh, hold on, I want to get into this. Okay, because it was a it was a Sunday morning, and we were we were flying out to Lake Charles that night, or the my yes. mom's hometown. Yes, and a friend of ours, uh, while we were in LA, had gifted us uh, not only some liquid acid in a spray bottle, three of them, but also a ketamine lollipop. Which, by the way, I've never seen before. I don't even know how you put ketamine in a lollipop. Do you? I mean, I think you just put it in there. Great answer. <laughs> Josh Wolf Science 101. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't know. When you make it, you just put it in. Anywho. Don't you think? Yeah. The, I mean, like everything else. Yeah, when you make it, you, you put make, it in. How do you make a lollipop? Well, I don't know how you make a lollipop, but I think you get some sugar, some lollipop ingredients, and then you put ketamine in there, and then you put the stick in it, and then you put it in the, and it locks up. What's the? Then, huh? What's that? What was the? You got to make the noise. I did. I don't know if I can make that noise. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Wait, the... No, not with your front. To the side. No, I can't do that. I thought that I was just a universal I, noise. I also can't roll my horse. Can you roll your tongue? Why are you making noises with it? <laughs> Dude, I will light this fucking place on fire if you make that noise. That is a mukbang special. I yep. will reach across the Mukbang tape. special is my nickname in high school. <laughs> Anywho, so we're in Philadelphia, and uh, usually we fly out really early Sunday mornings. But since we had to change our schedule and fly out to Louisiana, um, we had a, what, like 4, 4 p.m. flight? Something like that? 3 yeah, p.m. flight? Yeah, 5.30. Yeah. So we, I'm taking a rest and sleeping in, and I use the weekends to catch up on my sleep. And uh, I, I, don't, a, I don't. You don't. I get a call from Josh Wolf around, I'm up, but I get a call from him around, I don't know, 12, 12 p.m. I'm in the hotel. He's out walking around yeah. Philadelphia. And he calls me and says, hey, I'm going to need your help. I was like, what? He said, yeah, I, uh, I forgot I had that ketamine lollipop in my pocket and I just decided to pop it. And I was like, okay. He goes, I am extremely wobbly. I was more wobbly. I don't have a whole lot of experience with ketamine. But I was from what I know, you have zero experience with ketamine. I, I was a wobbly toddler out there on the streets, dude. And this was the best part. I go, where are you? And he went, I heard him suck on a lot of I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go, okay. I was walking stuff. around Chinatown. Yeah. Well, I didn't know where that was in yeah. relation to where we were. Yeah. And so I go, what are you near? And he goes, Well, I think I'm in a mall near a shoe store. I go, okay, great. Read the title. Read the name of the shoe store. And he read it to me. I go, great. It's a four-minute walk. Go out the nearest door. I will meet you there. And I, it's about a five-minute walk. I'm walking down the street, and I'm looking across to find him. And all I just hear is, hey, hey, hey. And he's just sitting there, and I look over, and he's like. Yeah, I was waving like Forrest yeah. Gump. 
<laughs> and I walk over to him. And I'm like, hey, man. And he goes, hey, man. And as he says that, he takes one step and stumbles into the wall next to him. So wobbly. It was great. I almost had to walk around. I almost had to walk around with you linked on my arm like a drunk toddler. It was, I, I don't know I, how else to explain it. It's a different high than I've ever, really ever had before because you're not really high, but you're high. From what I know, ketamine is no body. It's all Dude, head, I, right? It's all dummy. I could not keep a straight line going. So the only thing I can have that connect that like relates to that, when I was in high school, uh, there was these, these very popular things. Like we used to smoke out of bongs, right? That was what yeah, it was. Yeah. There was this really popular thing that kids in high school, college would do. They're called uh, a mook bowl or a mole. So what you do is you put a little, you put weed in a bowl and then you take like a little bit of the tobacco out of a cigarette and you put it on top of it. A like a spliff. Right, but just in a bowl. So you're just taking one shot huh. straight to the head. That we used to, I used to look at my buddy of mine and go, hey, do you want to go to Mookie Island? Because that's what we would call it. And that's what I can, that's the only thing I can relate that to is because that legit, I would sit there and be like, I can't stand up for about 10 minutes. I was fine. Like I wasn't like, like, yeah. like super fucked up or like felt like I was in a bad spot. I just was in a spot where like, if I stood up right now, it would be like, I just played dizzy bat. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the only thing I can relate that to. Y you know, I, I, I will tell you, I liked it. It's not like it wouldn't replace weed or mushrooms or even acid for me. I, I, I got to tell you about the uh, Philadelphia shows. Philadelphia is like home to three of the craziest live things that have ever happened at my show. Yeah. But I would say, guys, if you've ever seen that video on my Instagram page, and maybe I can go back and find it. You should repost it. Of that dude who came on stage and got kicked in the nuts. Yeah. Thunderclap. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a guy a couple of years ago, one of my Philadelphia shows who kept asking me to get on stage. And I was like, nah, man, why would I let you on stage? And he said, I'll tell you what, if you let me on stage, I'll let somebody in the audience kick me in the nuts. And I was like, deal. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what happened. It was pretty amazing. Um, and so my, the Philadelphia has been always such a real cool time to come through. And Lee Syatt was there. And, Love him. By yeah. the way, top, Probably top five favorite things I've ever heard you say on stage to somebody you said at the Philadelphia shows. Oh, dude. Th so, the, guys, there was this young guy who was, he was there with his date and um, his boy <laughs> and the boy, his buddy had a date. He was a young guy and he was trying to flex in front of his friends. He was trying, yeah, yeah he was trying to be funny. So, he funny. would say something or ask, like, during the middle. And, and so, if you, and also, guys, like, yeah, I could tell he was ready to try to be Mr. Tough Guy. Because the way he was sitting, right, uh, it was a round table, and he was at, if there was four people, one, two, three, four, if it was, like, sat numbered, one, yeah. two, three, he was sitting four yeah. with his back to his friends, arms crossed. Yeah. So just ready, obviously ready for combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I could hear him talking during your set and during Lee's set. Yeah. And he said something to during mine, and I was already kind of high on mushrooms. Oh, yeah, this was Friday night later. And I said to him, I go, hey, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, you're going to have to, you're going to have to be quiet. I, I don't want to play this game with you tonight. I'm a little high on mushrooms. And, and he said to me, that's not going to happen. And I said, look, man, I don't want to spend my time making fun of somebody who looks like a fat sixth grader. <laughs> and he did, dude. He, because, he, you know. When you're like 22 and you still got the baby fat, yo, dude, he, and he was squeezed into these clothes, man. Like I was, no, he like, was in tight jeans. Oh, tight, tight jeans. Tight. Toy, yes, I can tell you I'm very tight yo, on by your toy sh The shirt was tight. It was so tight. Like the veins were popping. Like it was tight. Yeah, he was losing circulation in yeah. more than one part of his body. Uh huh. And then I, I went in on him pretty hard for a little while. It very well deserved, though. Yeah, dude. If you if some of the comic on stage tells you to be quiet politely, and you say not gonna happen, whatever comes next is open. It's open. Like I'm you, you, you're inviting that comic to absolutely uh -huh. destroy you. I, I'm gonna tell you something, dude. When I'm on mushrooms, zero I, filter. I'm meaner. I don't think you're mean. Not mean, but, but like, like you just have my zero filter. But you my have, my insults come. Straight out. You're, you're, because on, on stage, I know like you have thoughts about things you want to say, but you go, ah, no, I'm going to say it. I'm going to keep it until you say something else stupid. Like, for example, my favorite thing you've ever said on stage, I don't remember where we were. We were in Columbus. You remember what I'm, yeah. Say? And the, yeah, that, 
that I'm gonna, but she I'm gonna, was so rude, man. She, she was kept, so dr- just a drunk sixty year old woman. Kept she was one of those like she was like a fact checker, and I hate those people. Where it's like you'd say something, and she'd go, "Yep, mm-hmm, I remember that." But like after everything she, she said, she also was very slurry and screamed out all the time and wouldn't be quiet. And I kept trying to ask her to be quiet. And the thing you said up top was, hey, I'm going to ask you one more time. Please be quiet. I have something very mean I would like to say, <laughs> but I don't want to say it. And I'm giving you one chance because if you say something else stupid, I'm going to say it. Because I knew if I said it, she was going to leave. And I wanted her to enjoy the rest of the show. But she was the just the drunkiest, white, trashiest, gravelly. She had yeah. this kind of, and she, you know, yeah, she had yeah, yeah, leather skin, and, and dude, and she said something else stupid, and this dude just, and I look at him, and I go, "What, what are you gonna say?" And he, this is exactly how he did. You went, "I bet your pussy smells like cigarettes." And I, I mean, you, listen, dude, it wasn't. It, I kind of messed around ahead of time. I didn't just dude. say it like that. But no, I, I did no. say, I did, I did, I was pretty sure that her vagina smelled like cigarettes. Dude, I, that's my favorite thing you ever said to somebody on stage. Dude, Fat Sixth Grader is my favorite. I'm going to use Fat Sixth Grader. I hope you do, but yeah. dude, you, me, and the audience laughed for at least oh. five minutes. Oh, it was a... And we laughed her out of the room. Yeah, no, no, it I was... knew it was going to walk her out. I didn't oh. want to walk her out, man. She uh, was just a drunk... We need to her... find that clip. I have it somewhere. Oh, God. I just, uh, Dude. I, I, I want to tell you something. I don't remember ever laughing that hard on there stage. There is a, a tide turning in me on stage. I can feel it. What do you mean by tide turning? This weekend in Austin, um, it started at the Netflix festival. When there was a table of guys who were talking who were friendly. You know, there, Chris was over there and his friends. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know what? I know who I am, and I know I'm not hateful, and I know I'm not racist, and I know I'm not prejudiced, but I've always kept those jokes because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to make people uncomfortable. And now I'm like, you know what? You're at a live fucking comedy show. And I like Austin, I, st- I started the set hard. I went in on some people hard right up front. And Netflix, at that thing, you know, Chris was sitting with that Asian guy, and I was like, what's it? You know, I was like, who's the hairless Asian man? And then, so whenever I referred to the dude, I would refer to him as a hairless Asian guy. And everybody laughed and had a good time. He laughed too. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I, in Austin, I went, I started the sets and I, uh, three of them, I went in pretty hard. But I think for me, um, you know, you go through, look, dude, uh, the last two years, if you came to see my show, I was going to do 75, 80, 90 minutes by myself. Mm-hmm. And right now, if you count Philadelphia and Austin, I'm at 60, 65. Yeah. I'm just not, look, man, it's what, one of the things about comedy that keeps me interested is I change it up. I make it different. I make the shows different. I do different things, but I think I'm at a spot right now because I'm at that spot in my life of a zero fucks given where I am at an extreme zero fucks given on stage too. Yeah. I understand that. I, I, that last show in Austin, by the way, the shows in Austin, Texas were yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. The energy all weekend was absolutely outstanding. And I'm sorry that I missed the Thursday show because I was stuck in Dallas Fort Worth for seven hours. Sorry. Anywho. And that last show in Austin, I remember I came off stage and I was like, that's the most crowd work I've ever done. Yeah, you did great. I talked to dude, the two ginormous men on the side of the stage. You did great. They put the two biggest Samoan dudes yeah. next to the green room door. I felt really safe because I knew if anybody tried to walk in there, they'd just like. They would pick somebody up like a fly. Yeah, they were big guys. It was like two Mauis were there from Moana. It was yeah. it was awesome. Like it was such a good time. And I that was I went up there and kind of just did the same thing. I was like, I'm just the thought that I had right when I go on stage, I go, anything you think of, any thought, just say it. And it's I, very freeing, dude. Anything I had in my head. So I just had like any thought. I just I was like, oh, first idea, best idea. That's and very I just freeing. started firing off. I talked to I, like seven different people. I had time. such a good time in Austin. We were at Cap City. I know a lot of people expect, thought I was at the mothership. I was not at the mothership. I was at Cap City. Um, my brother was there with us this weekend. His wonderful wife, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. Trevor was Trevor there. Trevor was there was this weekend, which was amazing. Dude had some magical moments on stage yep. this weekend. Super oh, funny. Oh, good lord. We did a podcast with the Drinking Bros. It was the first podcast that I ever Got this hat there. that I ever took acid beforehand. Yo, <laughs> the podcast was at 10 a.m. 
and we're we're driving over, and all of a sudden he just pulls one of those vials out of his pocket. And I go, "What? Why do you have the acid with you?" And you said, "It's 10 a.m. on a Friday. You're driving." And I go, "Yeah, it's 10 a.m. on a Friday. Is that the Josh Wolf we're at right now?" And we got inside, and you just said, "Yeah, and yeah." Took a half hit of acid as we started the podcast. It was pretty funny. You yeah. did great though. Like you seem to survive it. Or not survive it, but you handle you're like you're professional. I'm not I'm never ever worried about Dude, it. Dude, I am I I just and I've said this a million times. I mean, it's such a uh Hunter S. Thompson, Big Lebowski part of my life. Yeah. I'm just do you do that flower jacket I bought this weekend. We're here for fun. It's just like it's like my grandma. It's like someone made a jacket out of my grandma's couch. couch. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But I'm here for it, dude. I'm here hundred percent. Yeah. Randomly rented a Theo Vaughn in the same store. Fuck yeah! Shout Super out to Stag and yeah, Austin. Stag. I love, love that place. Love, love. Um, but it's such a good time, and the Drinking Bros podcast is out right now. If you want to check it out, so much fun. Yeah, it was a good time. That was uh, one of the most fun I've had on any podcast. Yeah, like a really, really good time. Guy, uh, guys, if you're coming, listen. I want to tell you this right now. The live shows are so good. Yeah. I am at peak um, performance as far as stand. Yeah, like I like I am at the peak of my powers. Yeah, um, this is one so of my favorite weekends too. You crushed. But let me tell you something, dude. I will tell you, and I don't usually jump into this shit because I usually don't give a fuck. Yeah. But the fascination that people have, by the way, can we just say real quick, you saw that Diddy video? Yeah. Can we just say that this dude is a full-on bitch? The, yo, you, the biggest bitch. The biggest bitch to be pulling a woman by her hair and stomping her when she's on the ground. The biggest bitch move, but you know what's an even bigger bitch move? Is to deny it have the video come out and then cry, pretend to cry. Like, you know what you should have done during this whole time is taking some acting lessons, dude, because that was the worst video. The only video I believed less with an apology was Crystal Lee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. But, but, but listen, man. Yeah. Listen, dude, you can't deny it. When you Call know her a liar yeah. and then admit it and say, I went and got help. Here's the thing, though. Bitch, and just... She was clearly trying to leave a fucking terrible situation, a complete bitch move. Yeah, it, it, like the photos also resurfaced of them going to a red carpet two days later with yeah. her covered in bruises. Yeah, this, this is guy. my thing. If you're like you, the fact that you deny it, and you know that there's video proof because they said you settled after she filed charges two days later to deny it for almost a decade. And then just to have it show up and be like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was fucked up. Like, fuck you, bro. That's the yeah, dumbest yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Nah, man. But I would say also, like and I, look, man, it's fucking awesome. I want to I want to say that I fully acknowledge when you are in situations that look, man, sometimes from the outside looking in, you're like, why didn't you? And you're like, when you're in it, you're like, I was scared. I was, I was, and I totally get it. But there are people in his circle, for sure, who knew that this kind of shit was going on. A hundred percent. And those people should be held accountable, too. All right, let me just get yeah, off yeah. of that, because I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it, but... No, I'm not, we're not wasting breath on total, bitch. Total bitch move. Yeah. Um, yo, this Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez thing. Can I just say this? Can what, I say this? Okay, yeah, first yeah. of all. I... And, and this is all speculation. And I want to say this, including myself. For the, everybody who jumps to somebody else's defense, who's in the public eye, you don't know them. I'm, a, I'm including me. You don't know me. Yeah. You know what I show you. Mm -hmm. You know what I tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just say that right off the bat. So all these are, this is just opinions, right? I don't know yeah. shit. You don't know shit. Nobody knows shit except Jennifer and Ben mm -hmm. and the people in their life. Yeah. But I will say he's looked miserable in pictures. For a minute. Oh, my God. But it seems to me, okay? And I had there's so many different breakdowns on this, but it seems to me this, okay? <laughs> she still 1,000% likes the public attention. She likes the paparazzi. She likes the pictures. She likes to go out. She likes to be seen. Yeah. You know who, attention. I, who I think is past that part? He's sober now. There's a lot of pressure when you go out. There's a public anxiety. Yeah. 
You know who doesn't seem to like it as much anymore? Ben Affleck. Yo, it's a tough match, man, because this yeah. dude, I'm sure when he used to go out, would go out and drink in, in ease, anxiety, whatever. He does not look like happy Ben at all. You know that, you know that, uh, you know that scene in Gone Girl where he goes outside to smoke a cigarette? And he, yeah. That's him. 24 <laughs> seven. Like it is, it is absurd. People are like posting photos that, that photo of him letting her into the car door and the paparazzi dude, he, everyone is like, he looks tired. And I'd be like, I'd be tired too, dog. Like that. It looks like yeah. a super stressful, like just like again, look, a, a picture can capture any moment and you're reading it and it may not happen. Right. Okay. Correct. But I will say and, and, she, and I don't have any judgment. I don't know either one of them. I've only met her one time. and she, You have? She alpha me like a mother. Oh, you told me about this story. Yeah, I was yeah. on Chelsea lately, and I wanted to meet her, man. And I mean, who wouldn't want to meet her? Can I them? be honest with you? I just kind of wanted to see what her booty looked like in person. <laughs> but I think she's very aware of that. And she had like a sweater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows that she's, she's sexualized I think in the she's media. very... That's not it. I think she's very aware that people are going to be staring at her ass and maybe she doesn't want to give everyone just a free shot all the time. Yeah, you got to pay for it. Okay. So, but she shook my hand. I go, hey, I'm Josh. She shook my hand and then she pulled me in and down. So it was a real Trumpy. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know how he does, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Power move. Yeah. And she just went, Jennifer. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. Boing. So she had 100% <laughs> <her> right. <laughs> but she... So I never, you know what I mean? Like, I, that's all. And I don't have any interaction with him. Yeah. I know some dudes who know him, and they have nothing but good things to say about him. That's what I hear. Okay. So here's what I will say. The people giving her a hard time, and by the way, this is the first public beating she's ever really taken. But I think whatever people are giving her a hard time about is pretty silly. Like, on TikTok, they're talking about how, you know, she talked about, like, uh, a ham and cheese and an orange drink and if you know you know and somebody from the Bronx was like we don't know what you mean and so everybody now one person says she doesn't know what you mean there are hundreds that said they do but there's one person and that's what came out yeah, yeah. one person from her school is saying this isn't what she was like yo dude yeah school I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something right now if I gave you a memory of my school I bet you there'd be 50 people from my school would be like, that didn't happen. You know what happened to memories? They change over time. Yeah. Your memory of something and my memory of something that we were both at are, is going to be completely different. I told you about one this weekend. Remember yes. one that just like my brain just completely yes. made up? Like yes. hundred percent made up. So like the critiques of her online, man, Come are on. pretty dumb. Yeah. Except the ones of talking about her, her talking People talking about her being rude at the Met Gal. I've seen those. I've seen the videos. She, okay. But she's never been the nicest person. Like, I, she's never had that reputation, I, right? She, not overly friendly, but I will say this too, man. People have their moments. You heard me on the phone with that fucking American. Guys, by the way, you know me, man. I'm a pretty friendly dude. I lost my shit I, I wanna, on a customer service call. I want to preface I want to preface that with this. I can I don't even I can't remember the full amount of times or like every full memory, but probably only a handful of times have I heard Josh Wolf get that loud and that angry. Dude, one time was on the, stage. It was at the end of an hour and 45 minute phone call. Oh, so went of where American canceled the last leg of your flight because of a mistake they made. Yeah. Not only would they not I had to call back and the other lady was like, this has been our mistake. And so not only would they never admit that they made a mistake, but they kept trying to tell me it was my fault. And the woman that I was talking to, I kept saying to her, Hey, and I said to her, I asked her name, not because I wanted to get her in trouble because I thought maybe that would make the conversation easily. More personal. Could, yeah. Yo, she, I must've asked her not to interrupt me so I could just ask questions. It's got to be 45 times, yeah. 50 times. And she would always jump in and you would say, please let me finish. And she'd say, okay, go ahead, sir. And then you would get halfway through a question again. God. And she would try to answer it without hearing the second half of the fucking question. Yo, 
Dude, I, I was I was angry. Legit I was just sitting there listening. Lost my fuck. Oh. I, guys, we're all none of us are perfect. This is my point, man. This is my point about her, Jennifer Lopez, Ben Affleck, anybody, right? Who you're tearing down, including yourself. Everybody has shit. Yep. Everybody has shit that you could bring up that makes them seem like a bad person. Yeah. Every single fucking body. Yeah. So, like, why are we judging people on one? It's just like when people do parenting stuff and then they get this sh stuff online. I can't believe you let her have peanut butter at the mall or whatever the fuck it is. Yo, man, look. It, nobody lives a perfect life. No. There's flaws in everybody. Nobody's perfect. I mean, I am, but... Cap. <laughs> Straight cap. Stop the cap. What would you cap. say is my biggest flaw? You can't take most serious things serious? That's a flaw? Yeah, because there's a time and a place for some things. I'm not even going to say what happened when we were in Lake Charles. Why? What happened? Did I make a joke at the funeral? At the wake? Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's when you're supposed to make jokes. Not when there's two 10-year-olds in front of you. Whose grandfather's funeral we were at? I didn't see the 10 year olds. What 10 year olds? Brad and Kimberly's kids sitting right in front of you. Oh, uh, you think they heard that? You said it pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did I say? Do you want me to repeat it? Yeah. Uh, Cookie was talking, like you were talking about uh, something, and then you're like, should I go up there and tell a story about how Cookie told me that her and Denny. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. At her husband's funeral, you said that. Listen, Cookie is the best. Cookie is was is Denny's wife. Denny yep. is the uh, best dad, dad who passed away. Yeah, and um, I, look, Cookie and Cookie is super funny. Riot, and I love her so best. much. Oh my god! And sometimes she overshares. On yeah, like the first Thanksgiving that on we better text. text. So funny. And so I was just gonna share something with the kids that she had overshared. I already know that. You I wasn't it. gonna share with the kids. I was just gonna tell a joke on, you know, up in front. Everybody else was telling jokes at the wake. Look, man, when I his kids were telling jokes yeah, at the wake. Yeah, so why can't I tell a joke? That's not the joke you should be when telling. When I die, dude, I don't want tears. I want stories and weed. I oh, want people I got to have you. a good time. Oh, I, I got you. I got you. Oh, 100%. It's going to be... I, I, this is... Uh, I'm gonna just, it's yeah. a celebration, bro. 100%. 100%. And that's what I always thought it should be because it's... For me... And again, this is no shame or talk down to anybody. Look, how you deal... How you do a funeral, how you deal with death is completely up to you. Everybody grieves differently. Let me just preface that real quick. However, I said the same thing when we went to Jack's funeral. Yeah. I told my whole group of friends, I got in the group chat, and I said, hey, zero black today. We're not wearing black today. Everybody come in bright colors. Yeah. Because it will make us feel better to feel like we're celebrating life instead of mourning death. Yes. Now, I get the, I get the just like, I guess call it tradition, right, yeah. of wearing black to the funeral. Like, I get it. I do. But like, I, I never, I never really agreed with that. When I die, here's what I want to happen. Ready? First of all, I put, I put in the joint in your mouth. Fucking open casket. Fuck. Nope. Zero. Zero chance. No, freaking, uh, and, and if you are going to do an open casket, I want some plastic surgery. So I look fucking sharp. I, I, that's the thing. Like, I want to look like me. So I don't know if you need to give me a couple fillers and some plump lips. I don't know if it's going to work if you're dead. Yeah, you can put fillers in me if I'm dead. Why not? Is that how that works? Somebody, uh, somebody uh, who does fillers. Me Let up. me know. I'd put some fillers in me. Make your pecs giant. Yeah, dude. Have you just be shirtless and jacked? Dude, jack <laughs> me. Dude, Super I, funny. Why don't we go taxidermy? Let's get some crazy nah, abs. I'm not going to lie. Cremation. You, tax. Okay, here's what I want. That's what I, I, I that's, yeah. This is what I'm going to say. If you're going to open casket, I just want to look jacked and I want to have some fillers. Um, nope. And I want some plastic surgery. We're not doing open casket. Okay. If you're going, and I would like to be cremated, but here's what I would like. That's what I would. I would like my ashes used as jokes. So I want you to put some as a joke on somebody's salad. You know what I mean? I want you to, I want you to shock people, like have it be on the ground, have someone step on it and be like, hey, you just stepped on my dad. Oh, I can do that. Like I, I want, I want you to accident, not accidentally, but put a little me in somebody's joint. Like I want to be used as a joke. Smoking that Josh Wolfpack. I want to be used hilarious. as a joke. 
Do you know what I mean? Spring, no, I'm, I'm down for that. Some and someone's coffee. Yeah, and and after they drink it, be like, that was delicious. It's kind of chewy. What was that? That was my dad. I think dad I'm in for that. Dad coffee would be hilarious. Dad coffee. Dad. Oh, <laughs> dead dad coffee. Great name for a coffee company, actually. Dead Dad Coffee is pretty good. Oh, it's just like, oh, my my dad who passed away always wanted me to start a coffee business. And it's just Dead Dad Coffee, but in every bag of beans, there's just a little bit of your ashes sprinkled in every one. Or you just, you pay extra for the, because my ashes aren't going to last forever, you know? That's how you just put a little, little, a little salt bay? Yeah, a little, just a little, little Wait, spice. Wait, you salt bayed me onto just... somebody's steak? That's what I'm going for, dude. I mean, see, I'm in for that. Fun. Though, because... Because that's the thing. Again, celebrating life instead of mourning death. And if that's the way you want me to celebrate your life, I'm in for that. Dude, that's funny you shit. That's what you should do. You should come up when somebody's having a steak and just salt bay me on their steak. Yeah. Nit, 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 nit. Is this how he does it? Like yeah. a dinosaur? Yeah, it goes like this. Yeah. Yeah. Because for some reason he liked it where it would like roll off his elbow yeah. into it. I don't know why. It's hard for me to do it because my bicep's so big. Oh, because you have because <laughs> you have arthritis. <laughs> no, dude. My bicep is too big to really get that hook 'em horns going. That is not what it looks like, is it? It's like a dinosaur. What is that noise? I don't know. <laughs> that was dinosaur? Yeah. That sounded like sleep apnea, not dinosaur. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the most powerful dinosaur in the world, the Tyrannosaurus apnea? Yeah, nah, that was, a that's was terrible. It's a big miss. Uh, Swing it a miss. I couldn't think of a good Rexy name. Should have just left it. Tyrannosaurus Rex? No, you should have just not said the joke. Well, when have I ever done that? Never, because apparently you said one at a wake <laughs> as well. So. That, I, I, yeah. The hardest I've ever laughed is at my grandfather's funeral. I was there for that. Nah, for Papa's funeral? I don't think so. That was the first time I saw you cry. Or was that was grandpa's, grandpa's, grandpa's dad? So Papa's funeral. Papa's me, your mom's dad. My dad's dad. So then at your mom's um, dad's funeral. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. So we were in the line where they, you know, where we were shaking hands. Yes. And there were so many old people there. Yeah. You know, my uh, one of my cousins, first of all, uh, we were joking, we were trying to take bets about who's, should we just stick around? There were a couple people who were like, they look like you're going to die by the end of the service. <laughs> should we just double up and stick around, you know? Run a two for one. Double it and give it to the next yep. person. <laughs> we had some, there was a lot of guitar jokes. Excuse me, I don't know why that noise is coming out of my mouth. Because you just inhaled a burger in 18 seconds before we started this? Well, of course I did. No, that's I'm not going to eat on. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's like, oh, you just have a little yeah, yes. reflex. Yeah. <laughs> I told you about the dude on the plane, right? On our way back from uh, Austin. What he said next to me. Yeah, what'd he say? Oh, my God. This dude sits down. We're on a Southwest flight. He sits in the middle seat between me and some other dude that he knows, obviously. And he sits down. And the first thing he says as he sits down and buckles up, he goes, oh, so gassy today. And I was like, oh, I'm going to sleep, dog. I'm not. I'm not nope. I'm not dealing with that. It was, he just said that and he was like, I don't know what's going on. Maybe it was, maybe it was that, that, that taco I had at seven in the morning. And I was like, it's 1030. How long have you been at the fucking airport, dude? Oh my God. I, I was gassed up that whole flight. I know you were right behind me. Yeah. I was gassed up that whole flight. Gassed me up. I, but it was one of those gases that didn't smell as far as I was. Concerned. Yeah. By the way, for Josh Wolf, that's not a thing. <laughs> just want everybody to know that Josh Wolf has a, Dangerous asshole. <laughs> a quick reference to a previous episode. Jacob Wolf may have a weak butthole. Josh Wolf has a dangerous one. <laughs> I coming, love that, dude. Coming to, a, coming to a comedy club near you. I'm gonna, the dad and son duo of the weak and dangerous buttholes. I am going to make a business card. It's going to say, Josh Wolf, dangerous asshole. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's does, right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's double dangerous asshole. I love that idea. I'm gonna write it, do a sketch on on dangerous asshole, like a McGruber thing, like an SNL sketch. McGruber, McGruber. I, I love that. What, what's your top? What's your, like your top three SNL skits? Uh, cowbell. Yes, sweaty balls. I think that's up there for me. Yeah, I, okay, I, I'm just gonna go with what made me laugh the most while watching. I know which one you're also gonna bring up. Cowbell. Made me laugh uncontrolled. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Sweaty balls that I watched, I watched that live too, made me laugh uncontrolled. <laughs> yeah. But the one that made me laugh 
more and not it's not even a close second guy. I think I know what it is. Is the Kristen Wig baby hand. Yo, how did we Damn. Awesome. I think you're missing one. No. Can I give you the honorable mention that I think you should have? Sure. What's up with that? What's up with that? Listen, dude, you and I laughed so yeah. hard at Keenan Thompson. What's up with that? I, ugh, I love God. what's up with that. And I love mostly out of what's up with that is the Jason Sudeikis running man. Yeah, oh my God. But it didn't make me laugh as much <laughs> as those three. You know which one made me laugh? That dear sister. I don't know what, that is. what you say. Were they like they're all shooting each other eighteen times with a gun, and the cops come in, and then there's a letter. You've never seen that SNL skit? Can I? Uh, can I? Throw, Do you know what, dear sister? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Can oh I throw God. one in? If we're only doing three, I'm gonna take out sweaty balls. Really? Yeah, sweaty because so funny. Van Van down by the river, Chris Farley. That sketch in that character was. Second to none, dude. Second yeah. to fucking what, none. What's the skit with uh, Farley, Spade, and somebody else that dressed up as women? And and he's there like, are you going to eat that? And Farley's like, yeah, I'm fucking starving. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> God, that kills me too. Yeah. Oh my good Lord. I I, I, I just watched the here's one. Here's how old I'm getting. I watched Saturday Night Live. Your mom recorded it. And outside of Keenan Thompson, I was like, who the fuck are these people? Zero. I know zero of them. I know zero of but them. But they're all, uh, they made an obvious switch to young. Oh, extremely. But it's all, can I be honest? There are a lot of people I saw on there who I've seen, like, their stand-up comics that do, like, real well, like, crowd work and stuff like that or have, like, good, like, one-piece sets. But yeah. there's a couple of people on there who I, I really enjoy. But yeah, Keenan's, Keenan's, Keenan's the longest standing member there right now. Yeah, dude. And Five. Oh, Probably the, the only person over the age of 30. 100%. I don't look, I don't blame them. You got to get younger and tap in. And but I, I just didn't know any of them. Keenan is the goat. Uh, that dude is ridiculous. I just watched a recent episode of the one Ryan Gosling hosted. Yeah. The opening sketch for that. Yo, Gosling. Good lord. The Beavis and Butthead Gosling, super funny, dude. Oh, the I remember that dude. The Beavis and Butthead. You know, they showed up, they showed up to an award ceremony dressed as Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Holy shit! I was laughing so hard. Gosling, it's the first dude, episode of SNL I've watched him probably well, because know, you years. have a hard on for Gosling. Check, please. Yeah, you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's no doubt you're watching. I, dude, Gosling. ever since Crazy Stupid Love, ever since I saw Gosling take your shirt off in Crazy Stupid Love, I'm in for that. I mean, that's basically what I look like. You know, it, uh, you look like Gosling in Crazy Stupid Love, basically. Cap. I mean, Stop the cap. We had more people think I looked like Matthew McConaughey this week. That was pretty. This amazing. week, by the what way, do you mean? when I was in Austin, did I tell you what happened? Oh, you were walking down the street. Yeah, so yeah. when I was in Austin, there were these two women across the street, and I could see them going. They were like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And I look over, and they're waving. I'm like, "Hey!" And they're like, "Will you wait right there?" I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Will you wait right there? We really want a picture. Will you wait right there?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." And I was, I was thinking to myself, "Man, I'm, you know, this is so cool." I'm so grateful to be at this point in my life where these people walking down the street, I actually I'm making their day. And how cool is that? They were so excited and they were like, yeah, wait right there. And they were high-fiving and shit. And they ran across the street and they got halfway and one of them goes, that's not him. Hey, never mind. And they turned around and walked back to their side of the street. Yeah, they're not. You were not who they thought they thought you were. No, but honestly, if they had gotten close enough and been like, are you Matthew McConaughey? You would have said yes. Yeah, too. Of course. 100%. I, I would have. Sometimes people ask me, am I Josh Wolf? And I, like, they're like, hey, are you are you the comedian Josh Wolf? And I just say, nope. And I walk away because I think it's kind of funny. Like, I, I, like some people are like, oh, are you that? In public, because Iman, my girlfriend, has been like, you should respond with something funny. Because I've always said this to you. I'm like, if you're going to come up and say what's up, I love it. I will say, hey, we'll have a conversation. No problem. But if you're going to come up, and not know me or your name, mm -hmm. like I have zero reference I to like who that. we are. I like that. Like one dude, that dude with the Chipotle line was like, "Hey, are you that that comedian son?" And I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, what's his name?" And I was like, "Josh." I go, "You're the one who recognized me. Do what's you, happening here?" Do you know what I do, which is fun? If some if someone says, "Are you that comedian?" and I say, "Yeah," and they say, "Can I get a picture?" I'll say, oh, "What's my name?" And they're like, uh, "I'm like, listen, it's, you come up with my name, we're taking the picture." Yeah. If you don't come up with my name, I'm turning my back in the picture and you can be like, this is a guy that I thought I knew. I do. <laughs> I try to do that in the meet greet lines because some people are like, 
oh, Josh, great to meet you. Can I get a picture? And yeah, but they, that's just. No, no, no. And I always make a joke and I'm like, I will take a picture with you once you know what my name is. <laughs> 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 we were just on stage for an hour, man. Yeah. Like, did, you, you got the last name. That's cool. Jay, definitely the start. Other than that, <laughs> you got to get the name right. But yeah, it's, that happened in Philly, actually. One of the guys was like, can we get a picture, Josh? And I was like, you can if you get but my they, name right. You know, even when you were younger and you and I were going to the parks in LA, people would just call us Josh and Jacob, but they honestly didn't know who we were. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, uh, Denise. Yeah. For a while, she said the first month or so, I just knew you as Josh and Jacob, but I honestly didn't know which one of you was which. Hilarious. I love that. Denise is the mother of pretty much the first friend I ever had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we don't want to say their last names. That's why I yeah. didn't say their last names. Um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was there. By the way, if we're talking about anybody who needs to not say their last names, every time we do a question podcast, you read the entire person's email and then say their first and last name. Yeah. When I tell you specifically before, hey, don't first name, last name that person. I'm like Ron Burgundy. If it's in front of me, I just say it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Or like that scene in uh, uh, Bruce Almighty where Jim Carrey's like fake typing the teleprompter for Steve Carell. Huh? Am I crazy? Right? Do you know that scene in Bruce Almighty? You know where Bruce Al like where Jim Carrey gets God powers, right? Yeah, yeah. And so Steve Carell is a news anchor on in a scene in that movie. No, I know the movie. Okay, then I just named the scene and you said, what? Yeah, I just didn't remember the scene. Oh, Jim Carrey's like, you know, fake typing out loud or fake typing on a, an imaginary keyboard. Right. And it's going to the teleprompter that Steve Carell is reading. And Steve is just reading everything that's in there. He's like, I like to cha-cha like a sissy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about the movie last night we watched? Oh, Chall the Challengers? Yeah. Look, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think the acting was really good. I, but I, I for me, it's not like a must see. I think it was, I think it was good, but yeah. I'm not giving it above a seven. There was just a couple of critiques, personal, personally, that I just didn't like about it. Yeah, the music threw me the fuck off. Yeah, I agree. But dude, that just, there was a sex scene, and they went into this real weird classical m music, and then it cut to the next scene, and it was just like, boom, 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 yeah, boom, a lot boom, of EDM. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and I was like, I and like. She goes, the uh, director's like, yo, nothing kills your boner like classical. <laughs> <music>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and then and then I turn to you and I go, and, all, and then I'm like, Mom, what's what's the deal? It's such a weird mixture of music. She goes, He's Italian. And I go, Ah, that makes a little bit of sense. But yeah. dude, all the we never talked about this. I just every time I hear that kind of like in weird settings where it's just like EDM house music that doesn't make sense. Remember when we were in Calgary? Every store we went into was light house music. Like, we walked into a shoe store, and I was like, you know, it's not hype, uh, hipper stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. We walked into, uh, I don't know, like a, like, a, like a Dillard's or a Nordstrom's or something like that. And it was yeah. like even more up-tempo. We walked into a coffee shop that looked pretty elegant. And it was just like, bah, 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 bah. and I just, I remember looking at you and going, when was Calgary? Where were we? Calgary? <laughs> <laughs> I just said where we were. No, we I were mean, what, what the hotel looked like? What was that hotel? Uh, guys, you know what hotels look like in Calgary? I don't remember where I was. I remember where I'm going. It Calgary? It was uh, it was that one. Oh, I remember Calgary. Remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't even remember what it looks like, but I can't describe it. But I know where we were. We were in Calgary. Yeah. 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 That, was, that was a fun time because it was just like every store you went into, no matter what store it was, I bet you in the baby gap, they're playing fucking house music. Honestly, kind of fucked with it. I really like it because remember every time we walked in somewhere, I was just like, yeah, I was yeah, just vibing yeah, out. Yeah. It was dope. EDC was this weekend. Was it? Yeah, it was this weekend. So we we missed all I'm that. So glad. Oh Jesus, it must have been jamming, dude. Well, I, can I be honest? Well, I've been to five Coachellas. Yeah. I've been to an Austin City Limits. Uh, I've done. I was at Astro World. Besides that, but you know, I've had I've had all around pretty good experiences at music festivals, mm -hmm. minus Astro World and minus probably one Coachella. And so, I. I like music festivals. I love the community. I love that it brings people together and that, you know, everyone, you like the same music. You're all kind of on drugs. It's all just like, it's, it's a big family community thing. EDC is one of those that I want to experience before I go. Well, we live here. Shit. Why don't we do it next year? Uh, dude, because truthfully, it looks like a lot. It, it just like, it, it, I see it all the time. Like, I always look at people's stories and I always want to see. I always have friends in town that are going to EDC. I have a buddy of mine who's been five years straight. I have a buddy of mine who flies out from L.A. by himself and goes to EDC for a weekend. 
by himself. Yeah, I mean, why not? Like, I, dude, I couldn't imagine going to a, a music festival by myself for a weekend. I went and did the Austin City Limits I went to. Sunday, I had to go by myself. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Because I was with my buddy Jackson yeah. and his girlfriend, Alyssa, at the time. And they couldn't change their flight to Monday, so they had to leave a day early. And I was like, well, I'm not leaving a day early because I was at LSU at the time. We were driving back Sunday night. Right. And I had to go vibe around by myself. For a day, honestly, at 18, pretty fun. Like, it, it was cool. It was like, I had, you know, I had the I had the weed that I needed. I had some edibles. I wasn't really into any harder or like psychedelics or shit like that by myself. But I will say, like, the people I met, the community, I met a bunch of, just a bunch of, I made friends with a whole offensive line from a high school football team. Every single one of them was 6'5 and over and one of the largest humans I've ever seen at 18. It yeah. was wild. But I ended up just kind of, I was like the quarterback of the group. I just kind of ended up in the middle of them and I was like, yeah, I feel safe here. I mean, it was, it was, we created a little semi-circle so that it like pushed people away from us so there yeah. was space and air in the middle. It was nice. If you, look, hey, find some offensive linemen at a music festival. It will benefit you. But like EDC is something I definitely want to try because they have a, they have a sunrise set. So they literally go all night and then there's like three or four DJs that perform as the sun's coming up. And so people stay there all night. It's at the raceway in Vegas and they have those bleachers that are still all set up. Yeah. And so people literally will just go up and sleep in the bleachers or like chill out because of like the drugs are wearing off or too much anxiety. There's just like thousands of places to go sit and go sleep. So I, I do want to try it because it just looks like so much fun. And the EDM community is not going to lie, the best community in music. Really? Hunt, dude, the nicest people. Really? The nicest people, the hardest partiers, but also just all around good people. Always, always, always. There was one Coachella I went to, a girl I was dating at the time, passed out in the crowd. Remember I told you this? Yeah. She passed out in the crowd and I literally had to fireman carry her or wedding carry her, whatever the fuck it was, out of the crowd. And as she kind of woke up, we are sitting down and she's drinking some water and these, I call them, they're called rave moms. And so, but they're all our age. Yeah. But they're girls and they're groups of girls and they're, they're guys who go to these raves or go to festivals, but they don't go into the crowds. They just sit on the edge of everything and just like to watch and they're just there for the vibes and for the music. It's very, it's very like Woodstock yeah. for them. Rave moms. So this is what happened. She's like drinking a bunch of water and she's like, Rave I can't. moms. And she said, I can't, like I, I'm still so dehydrated. And one of the girlies comes over or three of them, all of them came over. They all sat next to us, flower crowns and, and like in the happy go lucky. You know? Are they much older than everybody else? No, no, no. That's the thing. They're all like our age, but you know how okay. like in friend groups, you have a mom. Sure. Of you, the group? That was you. Yeah. I was, I was the parent of the friend group. A hundred percent. They called you mom. And dad, which yeah. I thought was weird. Yeah. Me too. Like, yeah. Like some, the, like the, <laughs> the guys called me mom and the girls called me dad, which I thought was really weird. Or yeah. like it just was mixed. And they came over and they're like, Hey, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, she just, you know, got a little too stuffy in there. And you know, the, the weed took some the saliva away, whatever. And they go, do you have anything to suck on? And I was like, elaborate on that. <laughs> Cause I could give you an answer. You're not yeah. gonna like it. And she said, do you have like a Jolly Rancher or something? Like a hard candy. I said, no. Why? I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. And she pulled, they pull out like five Jolly Ranchers and they say, hey, just take this for the day, but take one right now. The Jolly Rancher or any other hard candy, if you want your, when you're sucking on it, it's in your mouth, it helps create saliva. Uh, so it'll kind of bring, uh, it'll rejuvenate uh, that part. Uh, so anytime you feel like you're like that, take a Jolly Rancher, do something like that. And because the water only does so much. And I was like, huh. And legit, since then, I've brought a hundred pack of water jolly. Water only does so much? That's what I said. But like, if I think about it, at a certain point for cotton mouth, you have to drink so much water for that. Because sometimes it'll rejuvenate. Yeah, and the, but it's more water than just the saliva in your mouth. But hear You're me out. You're not saliving a liter of water. No. but Saliva? That's not a word. But it so, is since I just used it and you knew what I was talking about. That yeah. makes it a word. Did you know what I was talking about? No. Saliving? Like, you like creating saliva is what you were trying you to say? clearly knew what I was talking about, which makes it a word. That's the definition of a word to me. If that I say might be something... one of the dumbest things you ever say. If ever. I say something and you know what I'm talking about, oh, uh, that's a word. No, it just means I know you so well that I know you can't sometimes form words, so I just have to do it for you. Matt, did you know what I meant by salivating? Thank you. That makes it a word. That's not how this works. That is how it works. And salivating. That's right. My fault. 
There is an actual word, so we don't need the new one. Yeah, salivating. My fault. What did I say? Salivating? Yeah, salivating seemed like, but sounds, salivating. Sounds dirty, but it's not. But Matt, but so, thank you for pointing out that there is already a, a word, word, so I didn't have to. But salivating is not a word. No, but one that could be used just like instead of shat, you could say shitted. And pe- shitted's way funnier. Shitted's better than shat. Yeah, just because it's funnier. Because you also, by the way, I shit in the woods. I think shit is present tense and past tense. Indeed. Yeah, I used I, shat. I don't think is a word. Shat. Shitted and shat. Like I shat myself. Shat's not a word. Shitted's not a word. You it's, think shit is present and past? Yeah. I shit myself. I shit myself. Oh, this one time I shit myself. It's past and present. Well, yeah, I took the shit. I yeah. used to shit. I shit. I have to go take a shit. No, because those aren't the verb. Well, I have to shit. Shit is the verb. I took took a shit. Took is the verb. Yeah, but what's the word that where there's two verbs and one is... Because the verb we're talking about is to take. Take a shit. I took a shit. That take is the verb and yeah. shit is the... Is it an adverb? Noun. Well, shit. Yeah, shit is the thing in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I shit myself... Is the verb. Is the verb. Past tense. I, sh- I shitted myself. Not a word. Yeah. It's funnier, though. Uh, but so, the, Sorry. how do we get there? Water. Sorry. So, like, when you think about it, like... Sorry. When that. you have cotton mouth and you take a drink of water, it's like, yeah, that does it for a second. But then, for me, sometimes, 30 I seconds agree. later, I'm still thirsty. Like, I still feel like I have cotton mouth. So, it takes a tremendous amount of water to take that cotton mouth away. So the, so, so the, so the Jolly Ranchers help create saliva. And so it kind of helps you, you know, regain your, your whatever. So yeah, yeah, but you know what else creates water? Water. Creates water? You know, the, the moisture in your mouth. Saliva. Yeah. Water. If so, I drink so water, is, but saliva is not, saliva is not water. It's a body fluid. Sure. But you just said, you know what creates water? Water. That's not the sentence I think you meant to say. No, <laughs> yeah. but ah. what I meant is, you know, when you need water in your mouth, instead of counting on saliva, why don't you just drink water? No, a hundred percent. But I guess she saying what's the Jolly Rancher is more effective than the water. I'm just curious. I, or just as a nice add on. No, no. The water, of course, drink water because you it. want your body to be hydrated. Got it. But if you want to just create saliva Got fast enough to make your cotton mouth go it. away. It's Jolly Rancher. So Got from it. then on, no matter what news festival I went to, I had a hundred pack of Jolly Ranchers that I would carry on me. So for, for anybody. The, but the, so those are called rave moms. So the ketamine lollipop also same thing. Uh, I mean, I guess technically. Okay. Because it's a lollipop. Yes. And I guess it is still creating saliva. For sure. But also at the same time, drugs. So it, I don't know if that's... <laughs> counterproductive at the same time. I mean, you tell me. Were you cotton mouth? I don't have any recollection of <laughs> if I was cotton mouth or not. Um, Ooh, that was, yeah, that was funny. I really enjoyed that. It was a great day. Yeah, it was fun. I've really enjoyed, you know, because when I was single raising you guys, you know, I didn't smoke weed or anything. Yeah. Well, you didn't really have the time to. Uh, here's what it was. I mean, you always have time to do drugs if you make time. But Here's like, what it was. If shit went down and I was high, not that I don't think I could have handled myself, but if shit went down when I was high, I would have never forgiven myself. Right, 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 right. As the only adult in the room. Right. Where you're the one who has to be responsible. I got to be responsible. Yeah. So I just, and, and like I, looking now, I have confidence in myself if I'd taken a hit or two, but I wasn't, I was, I was so hyper-focused on making sure that you, yeah. you guys were safe, that I wasn't, I didn't really start smoking again until I started going out with your mom. And now you don't really have to worry about it because now I'm the parent when we're on the road. I drank some tequila the other day. You took a shot on stage for the first time and I don't even know how long. Gotta be a long time. Dude, the only time I've ever taken a shot with you was in Cleveland when I came and visited you. Remember? From college? Yeah, dude. Well, I also saw somebody get shot that weekend. Yeah, that was a good week. Did we take a shot on stage? No, 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 green room. Actually, we took two back to back. Yeah, but you were in a rough spot, dude. You were... I was 18. I was not having the most fun at college. I mean, granted, honestly, that was kind of my fault because I kind of just secluded myself. But also, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I secluded myself, and also I you know, made the mistake of falling in love before I left. Yeah, you had you were in a little bit of a funk, a little bit of a depression. Yeah, yeah. It was, I, it was. I a, also almost got arrested. 
Um, yeah, I mean, but that that happens. Yeah, you know, things happen. But I was just telling somebody a story earlier today at the bank about we were in when I was in college in Texas. Uh, we got arrested on the side of the road, and when I say we, I just mean one dude because um, he, look, man, sometimes you just got to play ball, especially back then, pre camera phone, pre anything else. Yeah, you you just got to play ball. And one of my buddies was not playing ball with the cops. Oof. And he went to jail. Now, he didn't go to jail. My friend who's a heart surgeon, he went to j- jail um, because he... <laughs> is he the guy who jumped on the rhino pen? He is the guy who jumped on the rhino pen <laughs> because... Can't wait to meet this dude. A, one of the uh, TABC officers was reaching for an ID from a girl who he's sitting with. And my buddy... Because my buddy, this dude, Jock... When he used to get too drunk, he used to think he was in the CIA. Oh, I remember this story. Yeah, so he slapped some cop's hand and said, she's with me, don't worry about it. And that is a quick way. That is assault on a police officer. And then on the way out to the car, he took the fucking cowboy hat off the guy and put it on his head. And that is when shit, shit went down. Went, oh, it went south real quick. Yeah, it went south because he ended up on the floor. Can I tell No, he did. He ended up on the hood of the car with that dude need him right in the nutsack. Hilarious. Can I tell you that? Did I ever tell you this dude? So he was in trouble. And so my friend. Who, Jock? Okay. My friend, who is a federal prosecutor now, went, <laughs> went into the judge's office, you know, because they, they had yeah, to yeah. talk about the charges. And he goes in with Jock with a briefcase and a suit on. And he's just some junior in college. So he sits down across from the judge, and the judge goes, are you his lawyer? And uh, my friend goes, no, sir. And he goes, who are you? And he goes, my name is Jeff. I'm a poli sci major. <laughs> and he was like, what are you doing yeah. here? And he opened the briefcase so the judge could only see the back of the briefcase. There was nothing in the briefcase. 100%. And he said, I'm just here to go over my friends. And he said, I want you to know what you're doing is illegal. Or you're impersonating. I could throw everybody in jail. But I like your mocks. <laughs> so I'll tell you That's what. That's like a TV show moment. That's he, hilarious. He was like, I'll tell you what. And I think my friend got a fine or something. He was like, but get the fuck out of here. Yeah, get out but of my court. don't let me see you one more fucking time. You know what is hilarious to me is you talk about all these crazy stories from college. And yeah, you guys seem like at one point just a bunch of degenerates, which yeah, makes me we laugh. Were. How is it possible that all of your degenerate friends are now doctors? What's the deal with that? Well, doctors are lawyers. Yeah, and you're a comedian. Like you're I, still a degenerate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is the road I'm kind of expecting. But how is it that all of your friends are what seem like way smarter than you? Well, because they're all way smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, okay, there we go. And so that's how that <laughs> happened. Yeah. It I always mean, surprises me because every time I meet a new friend, he's like, yeah, I'm a... I'm the chief of neurosurgery or like, yeah, I run my own law firm. What do you think? I'm going to fucking hang around with a bunch of dummies. That's they were in college. They were never dumb, man. They all did well in school. Well, I don't mean dumb as in book dumb, but I mean like, but, but look, man, when you're you college, impersonated a CIA officer and then jumped in a rhino pen. Well, he didn't impersonate a CIA officer. officer. He used to get so drunk. He just pathologically people. lied to himself that he was a CIA I, I'm not <laughs> sure if I've ever. So he used to disappear when he got that drunk. And I don't mean physically disappear. I mean mentally. Oh, okay. It was like you were dealing with somebody who was, became somebody else. It's like James McAvoy from Split. Yo, he went, (laughs) he talked one night. That was Patricia. One night we were in the, (laughs) one night we were in a hotel room drunk, just all of us drunk. And he started talking about the chamber dink. (laughs) Oh, wait. Chamber dink? What is a chamber? What, the, the chamber of secrets? I'm, that wasn't made by that time. Can I tell you something right now? Yeah. Nobody knows. To this day. What he was talking about. Does he know? No. Hilarious. But he was just like, we got to find the chamber dink. <laughs> and he went on this, like, we were all in the hotel room. Like, what is it? He was like, don't pretend like you don't know what the chamber dink is. Oh, my God. But he was like, let's get a party together and get some people out there to find the chamber dink. And we didn't look for the chamber dink. Well, maybe we did. I don't remember. But we definitely didn't find it. You know why? It doesn't exist. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, there, like was no, there was no chamber dang. Yeah, I like your friends. Yeah, he's a heart surgeon now, so good luck to everybody. That's out my there. point. Is like, this is what fucks me up. I know what my friends were like in college, and I know who they are now. So when I go to a doctor or a lawyer, I'm like, you were just like my degenerate buddies 
in college, and here you are, you're about to stick your finger in my butthole. This feels like something that I should have probably thought about twice. Seems like something out of like a Harold and Kumar movie, where it's like they like you go on in life and they just get to the doctor, and all of a sudden it's just the head of a fraternity. You know, it's on- like fucking Thad from Blue Mountain State. Hilarious. <laughs> You know that the Drinking Bros podcast we were on. So much fun. I've never told those stories about being, I know people would call it probably sexually, is it molested? Taken advantage of, yeah, sure, molested. I've never told those stories because you know what? I don't know that they're that big of a deal to me and two of them I think are funny. Well, that's the thing. That's why you told them because you don't think they're that big of a deal. But also, that's the thing. is like everybody gets to deal with what we would call quote-unquote trauma in their own way. Do I You think, laugh about it. Other people would cry about it. But do I think... <laughs> I cough. I couldn't... I, the cord was caught under the wheel, and every time I pulled it back, it was pulling my head down. <laughs> Fucking fuck. Clip it! Do I think... Here's what I really want to know. Ugh. Do I laugh it off? But has it affected me somehow deep down inside? Or or has it not affected me? I don't well, that's completely up to you to decide. Is it up to me to decide? Yeah, because you know what you always say to me. You're like, are you gonna let that thing that happened 15 years ago affect how like how you think every single day for the yeah. rest of your life? Yeah, I, I, I is, actually believe that. It is your choice then. It is you and you have chosen to laugh about it because you think it's funny in a in a hindsight point of view. Yeah. So that's completely up to you and how that affects you. 100 percent yeah, I guess so, man. And, and you know what it is? I mean, but also sometimes you can't really choose because like, like for me after Astroworld, yeah. I I dreams. I couldn't sleep for like a month. Remember yeah. that? But that was nothing that I could control. That was my brain simply just like, hey, here's some images. Because it was all that was talked about for a month. It's all I could also think f- about. Fear for your life and people died, and there's probably guilt and in, in somehow wrapped up in that. Yeah, I, yeah, that was a rough. I'll, I'll tell you for me, man, the Sexual stuff. I just I I don't blame I don't blame myself and never have blamed myself, and I I don't look at it. I almost look at it as like it didn't feel sexual to me. Yeah, either one of them yeah. didn't feel sexual to me. And if you want to hear with the stories, the Drinking Bros podcast is coming out, is out. Should be out right now, right? Yeah, but by the time you guys hear this, for sure. But it's out right now. But, okay. but, but, um, I just never, I don't know why, I don't know why it didn't affect me in a way. And maybe it did, dude. And here's the thing. Maybe it did like subconsciously and I push it down yeah. and all that stuff. But, but, um, they never affected me in a way I, that the, 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 the doctor, I laugh at, I think yeah, it's, it's so funny. funny. It's pretty funny. My, I think it's funny. My naivete maybe or maybe. yeah it just i don't know yeah and that's completely up to you though that's how you decide to let it affect you now not saying that like yeah dude everybody's you know different yeah. everybody gets to pick yeah. and choose how they deal with shit yeah i i, I yeah well, we're look, already at an hour that's, that's that's our time why don't you start with your business first because i always try to close the show out and then you interrupt me with something so why don't you go ahead and do your business first and then i'll close this out you know if you don't have any business I'll try to close this out, and then you'll still probably interrupt me. Guys, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Oklahoma City is our next date. I am trying to arrange a home run derby at the AAA field, me versus you, while we're there. Sick. Oklahoma City will just be Jacob and I. Remember the Friday night shows are the Mushroom Show. Um, yo, dude, I, that I, I sell out when I get there. So if you, uh, are interested in coming to that show, I would get those tickets. Now Monday night is my residency here in Vegas guys. Uh, the podcast is, uh, growing. Um, but we also would love your help to grow it some more. If you can tell a friend or leave a comment or subscribe or rate all that stuff means so much to us. Um, and the last thing I will say is this, I came home from this weekend. I walked, I I was tired, man. I know. Do you know what I did? I went in my backyard. I grabbed legit a best day beer and I sat back there, nailed the sound effect. No, you didn't. I had guys, 
I forgot how almost cathartic it is for me to crack a beer and drink it. Mm. And so Best Day is non-alcoholic, but it tastes exactly like beer. Yes, it does. It is such a cool thing for me to be able to get back and do. I love the sound it makes when you pop it open. I love the taste of a nice cold beer on a hot day. Best Day Brewing, dude, has been like a real lifesaver for me. Um, and I've, I enjoy drinking it with you. It feels like a nice bonding experience. Um, but yeah, everybody j- just a heads up. If you're drinking beer, but you don't want to drink beer, best day, bro. It is legit a great tasting beer. And the dude who runs it, Jim, great dude. Um, you know, he's a, a small business owner. And he's doing this the right way. So everybody, go out and get yourself. If you're not a drinker, but you want to drink a beer, best day brewing, best beer out there right now. Thank you all so much. Jacob Wolf, take it away. Like you said, comedian Joshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Oklahoma City, you're up next. Uh, uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Thank you guys so much again. Without any of, uh, Without any of you, none of this would be possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. On another note, I am featuring in two shows this weekend in Vegas. I'm doing a show Friday night, Johnny Brim show, a uh, good friend of ours, and Saturday night at Josh Lithauer show uh, at Noreen's. If you want to learn more about it, I'll be posting on my Instagram every day this week about where to go, where we'll be. Um, I'm very excited uh, to do, you know, my first two feature spots here in Vegas. So thank you guys again for all your support. Um, come see us. We're having a whole bunch of fun. And without further ado, tell somebody you love them today. Do something nice for someone. We'll see you all Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.